Amazon just issued a huge warning, one that many other companies may follow, and it's kind of in line with mandates that they want to put in place for their workers. Now, before we even get into watching this, I understand that this is a very polarizing topic, one that older generations don't necessarily understand as much because, well, not many of them really had the option to work from home. Meantime, tech workers might actually have to put the work to get oh, ahead. No. <laughs> Amazon is warning employees that they won't be promoted if they disregard return to office mandates, which requires only three days a week. And they're still complaining about it. I, I don't I don't even know what to do with these stories because to me, they're insane. I mean, just look <laughs> at the basic facts. They want you to come in three days a week and people are saying, I can't do that. You won't promote me if I come in three days a week. But it shows you just culturally how far we've shifted that that would be a major hurdle. It's crazy. I mean, it's it just, I don't know what else to say about it. Like if you wanna get promoted, you gotta go to work. Again, this is a very polarizing topic because on the one hand, you have workers who say that they can do their jobs better from home, but then you have others that are saying that working from home might increase the risk of micromanaging and others argue that hybrid work, the one where you spend some time working in the office and then some of that time is spent at home is the, actually the best solution. But what do you guys think about this? Do you think that Amazon is right for holding off on promotions for employees who don't wanna come into the office? Comment a quick yes or no on that one and while you guys are at it don't forget to drop a like for the video i really appreciate it subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications so you know we're not steering that far away from what amazon's doing because they just recently announced that they're cutting several hundred jobs in order to focus on new tech amazon's alexa division has announced layoffs will happen because they're ditching some initiatives to focus on generative ai Amazon sent a statement to King 5 that says in part, as we continue to invent, we're shifting some of our efforts to better align with our business priorities and what we know matters most to customers. I think all, everyone at this point realizes that almost whatever business you're in, uh, that you're probably going to be uh, affected or influenced in some way or another. Uh, by the emergence of AI. What others see as ironic with this case is that these employees, well, they were the ones who kind of pioneered artificial intelligence at its infancy. I mean, it's like training your prodigy to become better than you and then suddenly axing you out of the picture. You know what I mean? And this is creating a new wave of concerns for workers, especially in our own country, as we could be looking at the future of jobs just being completely wiped out and lost due to this kind of technology. Now I have to ask you guys, are you currently employed? And if so, are any of you worried that your job might be taken away by artificial intelligence or AI someday? Is it now time to find some new skills for you to use for the new workforce that might emerge out of this? Or should we just not be worried because there's just nothing quite like the human touch? I mean, we've seen it with the checkout counters, right? I know for a fact that a lot of folks here in our amazing community would rather talk and deal with a person at the checkout rather than have to use these self-checkout counters that we really don't like to use all that much because sometimes they don't really work all that well, or at least as well as we would like them to. Now the backlash against self-checkout is growing and stores are starting to dial back on the technology after it, it seemed to really explode over the past few years. Booths, which is a, a British supermarket chain, says that it's removing self-checkout stations in all but two of its 28 stores. In the U.S., Walmart, Costco, Wegmans, and other chains have also revised their self-checkout strategies. CNN business reporter Nathaniel Meyerson is here with more. So, Nathaniel, I mean, I guess I could ask why the backlash, but I personally, as a consumer, understand the backlash. Tell us a bit more. Yeah, Rahel, I think anybody who's used a self-checkout machine can tell you all the issues with it. You know, you misscan something, it asks, oh, which vegetable do you want? Then you have to call over the employee. <laughs> um, self, you know, self-checkout was designed as a way for stores to save money on labor costs and make the experience for customers better. But as we see, uh, employees still have to man the self-checkout um, counters, and they often end up taking longer than going through a regular cashier because of all these issues. Uh, yeah, so what did the, the British grocery store say um, about why it's removing self-checkout? Same issues? Same issues, Rahel. So booths in the, in the UK, I, had, I have to admit, I had not heard of booths, but they're certainly getting a lot of attention for this move. They say that customers are frustrated with it, point out all of the issues, and they, so they just want to go back to old-fashioned human beings uh, checking people out. 
Uh, yeah, I think a lot of consumers would like to see old fashioned human beings as well. <laughs> In fact, the COO of Target even said that the company is now refocusing their checkout areas and has seen a 6% increase in customers who would rather use the full service cashier lanes. You see, that's the huge difference between man and machines. If a human breaks down and we're talking about work, this is probably because of a mental challenge. They just need to recharge and refocus, get their mind ready for the grind again, right? But if a machine breaks down, well, then there's a lot of repairs that need to be made. And don't get me wrong though. There's definitely ups and downs with technology, but like I said, guys, there's just something about human interaction that machines will never be able to replicate. But it's not saying that humans are perfect either, okay? Just take the story, for example, where a U.S. Postal Service employee, along with two others, had been recently charged and connected to a scheme that involved stealing checks worth more than $24 million. Now, you might be asking, well, how the heck did they come out with that much money? Well, it seems that they were doing it for more than two years before anybody even noticed. They're now probably going to be facing anywhere between 30 to 45 years in prison because of all all of this. Now, since we talked about money, did you hear about the Pentagon failing an audit? Well, as it turns out, they've been failing this audit for quite some time now. One of the main problems with the Department of Defense's accounting stems from the older methods still used today to track and organize funds. You know, there is a myth out there that just because the department can't pass the audit, it doesn't know where it's spending its money, and it does. But what it doesn't do well is track it at an enterprise level. One example of items found in the recent audit was that the Navy found a warehouse with $126 million in aircraft parts that was not accounted for, according to the Government Accountability Office. It's items like this one that make some critics ask if the Pentagon's overall budget could be more focused and efficient. What you have right now is a Pentagon that is everything for everyone. The DoD is trying to heal cancer and heal planet Earth at the same time. And it's always tacking on more missions. It's the matter of efficiency is what are you making it efficient for? Six years, folks. The Pentagon has not passed an audit in six years. And the question on everybody's mind is, why do we continue to fund the Pentagon? But I mean, it's not like you and I as taxpayers have that much of a say here as to where our taxpayer money goes. But am I wrong to think that if we fail an audit once, just once, okay, that we wouldn't be in huge trouble? But the Pentagon can fail this audit multiple times and continue to collect billions upon billions of dollars of our money. I mean, it's incredible to some extent. Speaking of incredible things that I've learned recently, I just read this one article that says that Jen Z or pretty much the younger generation, they think that some of them should be hired based solely on their personality and not their productivity. Hmm, that one's a little bit tricky. What do y'all think? So there's a new term that comes with it called personality hire, meaning that yes, you're hiring them just for their personality. Now, I guess this kind of depends on what kind of job or even job market that you're in. I guess that plays a huge role if your personality matters for a particular type of job. Although productivity is still one of the biggest things that most employers are going to be looking at. But hey, what do you guys make of this? Would you ever hire someone just because of their personality, even if they might not really do anything when they got there. Make sure you share your thoughts down below on this and everything else that we talked about today. And before I go, guys, I want to thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you on the next one.